tie your hands with me. Lord Jesus Christ, Father, these are the last times, Lord, before you are going to be calling us up. And we, the Church of the Living God, we need to consider many things, and those, Lord, who are not, but yet say that they are, need to also consider these things, Lord. They need to examine themselves in the light of the Scriptures. The authorized version of the scriptures. The book that you have chosen, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Father, get me out of this. Get me out of the way, Lord, that thou, Lord, may be, be present to speak unto these people. And that we who are of the same spirit, which is thou, O Lord Jesus Christ, our Father may hear and be edified and instructed. And Lord Jesus Christ, those who are not, may they take heed. Lord, I am incapable of serving you. I am a sinner who is chief. It is only by your mercy and your grace that anything becomes anything that you do through I, a sinner who is chief here on YouTube or out there amongst them lost people, Lord. Give those, oh, those looks and you know how they shake their heads at you. <clears throat> Lord, please give me the words that you will have me to speak. Please be with my mouth, speak unto this congregation. Lord, uh, if you're not here, <laughs> if you're not here present, because you dwell within me, Lord, and every single one of the Church of the Living God, Lord, you dwell within, within us who are truly saved. Speak unto us. And Lord, um, to all the brethren and sisters, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, who have um, given of their great mercy and kindness and compassion. May you bless every single one of them a thousandfold. May you recompense their graciousness into their bosom. May you bless this time, Father, and thank you, Lord, for bringing more, more to hear. We ask this all, Lord, our Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, just then you'll be glorified. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Pretty nice, isn't it? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. <coughs> and turn in the authorized version of the scriptures to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 14 on to verse 18. Very familiar verses unto you. Second Corinthians six verses fourteen on to verse eighteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial or Belial? Excuse me, I'll get it out. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? And the temple of God are ye, if 
you are truly saved and born again, because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwells, dwells within you. You are sealed until the day of redemption. <clears throat> okay, shut up, shut up, sorry. For ye are the temple of the living God. <laughs> sorry. Should have just... As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Look at me. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, Paul says this within the current dispensation which we are in, the time of the Gentiles, which is rapidly coming to an end. I personally believe, as many other brethren that I know personally, I do believe that next coming spring, that is my personal belief. Because how many are going to be left and remain to be caught up, right? But, see, this is in the current dispensation. I want to show you something. Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. Verse 11, Isaiah 52, verse 11, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing, go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. Right there, verse 11, Isaiah chapter 52 was written during the dispensation of the law, faith and works. Paul says it here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, the dispensation of today, the time of the Gentiles, and Revelation 18. Yeah, you get the drift already, don't you? Yes, yes. There are some that do not so bear with me. Revelation 18. <clears throat> Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now, the my people. Revelation chapter 18. Spoken for who? The Jews, my people. Yes, there shall be a few Gentiles during that time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, that will be saved and get saved. Yes, but it's the time of, hello, boop, Jacob's trouble. It's for the Jews. Okay? It is for the Jews. When the Jewish people accept Jesus Christ, God the Father, as their Messiah, you come back, okay? The latter rain prophecies will be fulfilled then. Remember, the latter rain thing is for the Jews, not for us today in this dispensation. Okay? We get that? But we see, under the law, time of the Gentiles, time of Jacob's trouble. What is that? That's crossing dispensational lines. Okay? And see, the easy believism heretics, they like to say, well, since it's talking, since uh, they, like, they like to compare Isaiah's talking to the Jews, this is for the Jews, so when it says, come out from amongst them and be ye separate, that must mean that they're talking 
uh, that Paul's talking for the Jews in a different dispensation. See, it's desperation on their part. And these people, like I was saying to my wife, <clears throat> and I'm going to be a little coarse with this. Uh, these people, brethren, sisters, will believe anything that the Jesuits tell them through that stupid television. And they themselves are kind of stupid for believing it unflinchingly. We know that. But this thing of coming out, called out, coming out, question. When did the very first dispensation end? A dispensation is where God dispenses different rules, laws, regulations. God's grace is throughout the entirety of Scripture. Okay, because if it wasn't, guess what? We would go like a puff. Okay? When, when did the dispensation end? Well, let's look at that very quickly. Okay. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, on to verse 7. If you hear that, my neighbors up there are doing stuff with power tools. I don't know. Drop it. Genesis chapter 3, verses 6, on to verse 7. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, saw that it was good for food, even though they were commanded not to eat of the tree, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to, des and a tree to be desired to make one wise, <clears throat> she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Right there, the roles were reversed, backwards. Adam was supposed to provide, not Eve. Okay? And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig, tree, fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Yeah, their eyes were open. And they knew that they was naked. And they were embarrassed. So. <clears throat> they disobeyed God. The very first dispensation in the Bible was. There you go. In the scriptures. In the scriptures, the very first dispensation was works. If anyone tells you it was faith alone in the very first dispensation of the scriptures, they're lying to you. That's not true. Okay? It's not true. They didn't need faith because they could see the Lord. Prove that to you? I've already done a video on this. Okay, uh, verse 8 in Genesis chapter 3, you read that on your own time, okay? How could they see the voice of the Lord walking? They said they heard the voice of the Lord walking, okay? They could see him. They need faith because they could see him, see? But they disobeyed. They ate a tree. Their eyes were open. Verse 22 in Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> Peggy part. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand 
and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. And, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of, of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. There's the end of that dispensation. Okay, how did it end? Adam and Eve disobeying the commandment of God and then God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, booted them out. Okay? Okay? When you look into the scriptures of the dispensations within the scriptures, and I do believe there are seven of them, how do they usually end? Not well. Not well. Now, turn to Genesis chapter 6. This called out. Now, Adam and Eve were not called out. They were booted out. Okay? Genesis chapter 6. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 6. We're going to read this whole chapter. We, we, uh, we, we, we got ourselves some things we're going to be going over today. Hope you can handle it. Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. That means that the maximum that of, especially today, that a man can live or will live is 120 years. If someone lives longer than that, then it is only by God's grace, okay? Or if by strength, okay? They didn't, um, this was not immediate. It was a gradual process, okay? I've already explained that in a video before, but let's continue. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. <coughs> Excuse me. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, this about Noah in and of itself is not one of the seven dispensations. There are, there are those that will argue that, but the point that we are looking at is this being called out, being separate, set apart. Okay? <clears throat> Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, the Israelites, the Asiatics, Ham, those of African descent, and Japheth, the Europeans, stuff like that, okay? Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, 
and the earth was filled with violence. When was the last time you looked out your door? When was the last time you happened to see any kind of Jesuit news media kind of thing going on? <laughs> yeah. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Preparation here. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. There's a difference between pitch and slime, by the way, which the Roman Catholic Bibles like to replace pitch with slime. Look that up on your own time. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. Roughly a cubit is elbow to finger. Roughly. Okay. <clears throat> the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth, to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. Two, four, six, eight. There were eight people. Eight persons, spirit, soul, and body, on the ark. Eight. That's it. There were no other persons, spirit, soul, and body, on the ark. Except them eight. Okay? And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And, thou, and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, According to all that God commanded him, so did he. So, the Lord warned Noah, Hey, I'm going to destroy it all. Prepare yourself. Make provision. Get ready. It's coming. Genesis chapter 7. Oh yeah, we're going to read this whole thing too. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Come on, come. He, was, uh, he who is thirsty, come. Come, call, hey, come on, let's go. Oh, right away, you, you can see the typology there, as they like to say, of the catching away. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days... 
and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Forty days and forty nights. The time of Jacob's trouble is seven years. <laughs> and some of you think you're going to prosper and have a revival during that time. And you're nuts. You're stone cold crazy nuts. <laughs> People, yeah, sure. People will get saved during that time period. But it's faith and works during that time period. <laughs> faith alone, are you crazy? Or are you just a devil Jesuit infiltrator? Hmm, I wonder. Let's continue. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Come on, let's go. So it's going to happen. And Noah in Genesis chapter 6 did great preparation, built the ark. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. Now, there are some out there when it uh, like to tie, try to tie in with, uh, you know, where it says, of clean beasts, and of the beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of every creeping thing of the earth. They like to try to tie that into certain kindreds and some stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you can make that argument for instruction in righteousness. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You, and you could probably uh, validate that through searching the scriptures. Yes, yes. But that's a moot point. Had to throw that out there. If you've ever heard that, someone uh, going to this and saying, well, this is uh, the, this kindred, this is that kindred, that is this kindred, because there were, it's the three here, you know, of beasts, uh, uh, clean and not clean, of fowls and creeping things, and they like to tie it into Shem, Ham, and Japheth. What? What? You never heard that one yet? Be aware. Let's continue. And again, uh, did we read nine? We'll read it again. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was upon the earth, Forty days and forty nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah, and Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons, with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark. Two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed, prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of, ev and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. 
in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. A hundred and fifty days. Now those who like to get into numerology will try to add with the 40 days and that to come up with something. you got to be careful with that. You really do. But we see Noah was, number one, warned of the coming danger, made preparation for it. And then we see that Noah was called uh, of God. Hey, let's go. Total type of the catching away of the body of Christ or the resurrection of the church of the living God before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now, notice something here. Go to Genesis chapter 8, verses 13 on to verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, verses 13 on to verse 22. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seven and twentieth day of the month, the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings unto the altar. And the Lord smelled the sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, the Lord said in his heart, Yeah, one God, not three divine persons that make one. Boop. Never mind. I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as circle it. Circle as, as I have done, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Now, in type, Noah going into the ark type of the catching away of uh, the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, obviously. But also, we see the death of that what was old, and then those who survived go forth to produce and to repopulate, or to multiply, to be fruitful and multiply. You get that, don't you? Yeah. There was a death. Many died. Well, they were spared, but yet... After it was over, they went forth out of the ark and were fruitful and multiplied. And things began again. Hmm, you don't say, right? But notice this, that Noah offered a burnt offering unto the Lord. It was not commanded of him, was it? No, it was a thank offering. 
It was a thank offering. It was not an object of faith. Uh, you know, in Amos chapter 8, where it says there will be a famine in the land, you know, of hearing of the word of God. <laughs> yeah, that's what these guys are banking on. Because <laughs> there's a famine in the land. That That is not a prophecy that is totally fulfilled as of yet. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, Noah made an, gave an offering unto the Lord of his own free will. Uh, show me where the Lord commanded him to make a burnt offering. No. It was a burnt offering. Thanks to the Lord. Yeah, yeah, you get the, yeah, you get that, don't you? Okay. Now go to Genesis chapter 9, verses 1, on to verse 7. Let's, re let's, uh, let's reinforce this. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. Think about that. Nine times out of ten, unless you come up against a rabid raccoon in a barn after you move a bale of hay, and then you got it, unfortunately, because it's rabid, and if you've ever run into a raccoon with that, like, jagged teeth, you got to smash it to death with a shovel. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. But anyway, most beasts out there are afraid of man. Nine times out of ten. Yes. Yes. Even them big elephants and stuff, they're like spook of man. Hmm. Wonder why. Let's continue. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your hand of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man, spirit, soul, and body. And you, be ye fruitful, and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. Oh, and incidentally, uh, don't eat blood in this dispensation. Under the law, in our current dispensation, okay? <laughs> yeah, uh, Catholics tell you that, you know, they do that, woody, 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 abracadabra, hocus pocus, but the wine through transubstantiation <laughs> becomes the actual literal blood of Christ. That is exactly what they teach. That's forbidden in Scripture. But then again, when it comes to the Scripture, hey, Pope Francis and Sosa, especially, ah, the scriptures are relative. Yeah. Just thought I'd throw that out there. But you see, again, many people died. Noah and the ark, was the, the ark was lifted up. After everything was done, the ark rested. And they went out. And... And you be fruitful and multiply and bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. Get the type? You get it? Yeah? You see how Noah was called? You get that, of course. What about Abraham? Abraham, go to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Called. 
Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Lot. By the way, the scriptures in Second Peter chapter 2, I believe it is, refer to Lot as a just man. And Abram took Sarai, his wife. Did I say Abraham earlier? Beg your pardon. Abram. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto, and said, Unto thy seed, singular, Will I give this land? And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain, and he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and, ha and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Hmm. Oh, that's just for the Jews. <laughs> and Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that, I may be well, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass, that when Abram was come, down, come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and asses and men servants and maidservants and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this thou, that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Make a note of that. Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her, and go thy way. It's like... <laughs> Okay, here you go. <laughs> Bye. Get out of here. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they went, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. Mm. Later on within the book of Genesis, Abimelech, I believe it was Abimelech, this happened again. Abram, I think uh, at that time it was Abraham. Um, he, you know, said of Sarah that it was his sister and he took her and, and God said to him in a dream, don't mess with her. Don't mess with her. Like, Lord, I, 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 in the integrity of my heart, I've done this. And the Lord said, uh, yeah, I know. That's why I kept you from sinning against me. 
Give the man back his wife because he's a prophet. Allah hurts you. How would he have known that? Because the law of God is written in men's hearts. But you see the call. The call of Abram. Okay, and also, you see that he built an altar and called on the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 13. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel onto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, onto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. Now, Lot was around with the initial calling. That, you know, hey, come on, let's go. I'm going to take you to a place that I will show you. Not right away, but I will show it to you. Lot was with him. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. For if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, and that it were that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest. To Zoar. Told you place. Oh, you know what? You know where we're going, right? Don't you? Don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Go back. Verse 10 again. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. Hmm, looks good. Verse 11. We already read, read, uh, read verse 10, so let's continue. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked, and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes. And look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed, singular, forever. Hmm. Who do you think he's talking about there? Yeah. Let's continue. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. 
who can know the height, the depth of the Lord, of the love of Christ, right, in Romans? Now, go to Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. The Lord and two angels appeared to Abram. Okay? Excuse me. The Lord and two angels appeared unto Abraham. Okay? And the angels were going to go destroy Sodom. And Abraham acted as a type of a intercessor. For Lot's sake. More or less. And uh, whittled the Lord down to about ten. He found ten righteous people in Sodom. He would spare the city. It turns out there was only one man. There was only one man. That was in Sodom. That was worth getting brought out. Genesis 19, verses 12 on to verse 26. That's the backstory. And then the two angels go down. They, um, they go in with Lot. They be with him for a little while. Then the Sodomites go and circle the place. And they, you know, knock at the door. Bring out the two guys so that we may know them. Then the angels come out and then they smite the, everybody with blindness. That kind of thing. Now we pick up verses 12 and verse 26. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place? For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Mocked. You out there, here, uh, warn people of this danger that is coming. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, circle that, lingered, No sense of urgency. Because he was lingering. No, oh, there was a little sense of urgency, yes, because he warned him in verse 14, but he was lingering. The men laid hold on his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life. I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live? And he said and he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar, little one. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. 
Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Scriptures declare that Lot was a just man, vexed it with the filthy conversation of the wicked. But yet he stayed there. And they brought him out. And then if you keep reading, because his two daughters thought that everybody was destroyed, they lay with their father. And what happened after that union with their father? Moab and the Ammonites. And you search the scriptures about what kind of havoc the Moabites and the Ammonites caused unto the children of Israel. Just saying. But see, initially, Lot saw with his eyes. Everything looked good. Wound up in Sodom and Gomorrah. Constantly vexed with the Filthy conversation of the wicked. Lord being merciful to him. The only righteous man in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's just one. A very small remnant. Very few. Only one escaped out of many. Get it? But he lingered. Worried about his stuff, probably. Even though it doesn't specifically say that in the text. The angel's like, let's go. Don't look back. What happened when his wife looked back? You could say curiosity, but I beg to differ. I think it was more of a yearning and longing for what she was leaving behind. When God takes you out. And you look behind. You get it? So, we saw Abram called out. Okay? We also see how Lot was called out. Okay? And incidentally, Lot went in there with a lot of stuff. Lots of stuff. What happened to it? He lost everything. Lot and Abraham and Abraham had too much stuff. So they had to split their ways. Abraham kept increasing, increasing, increasing. Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah. And was vexed. And then the time came when God was going to dis uh, was going to destroy it. And the angel, you know, the angels got him out of there. With nothing. You get it? Now go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Now the thing to note there is Noah, Abraham. Those were individuals. Singular people, spirit, soul, and body. Now we're talking about a nation. Now we're talking about a nation. But remember, in the book of Acts, and we're, we're going to look at this eventually, that in the book of Acts, Stephen refers to the church in the wilderness. Church, by definition, is a called out assembly or a called out number. Not a building. Exodus chapter 12. 
church in the wilderness. Now, the word church does not appear anywhere in the Old Testament. Okay? But called out assembly. Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 28. I did a video on uh, going through this whole thing um, a couple years ago. But we're, we're going to look at it now. Okay? Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 28. And the Lord spake unto Moses and, uh, and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year uh, year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood, blood, where the life is in. The life is in the blood. And strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. The bitter herbs at the Passover dinner, what they do is they'll take parsley. And they'll uh, dip it into salt water to the tears and stuff like that. And they have a thing of bitter herbs, okay, that they will, they will eat, okay? Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs and with the protuberance thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And every single one of the plagues that um, the Lord put upon Egypt were direct rebukes kind of our Lord mocking <laughs> the little G gods of Egypt. Every single one of them was. Every single one of them was. The most notable one for an example, a darkness that can be felt, Ra, the sun god. Okay? I forget the, uh, which one it was about the frogs and the bog. But, I mean, you can get very detailed in that. But every single one of the plagues was a rebuke about uh against every single god of Egypt. Little G-God, just so you know. You search that up uh, out on your own time. It'll take you a while. Let's continue. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, the doorposts and the uh, the top of the doorpost, totally covered. And they go in through the door, hello, boop, okay? And when he sees the blood, okay, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, 
cleanseth away all our sin. By grace ye are saved through faith. You get it? Of course you do. Okay? Let's continue. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread, even the first day. Ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. That soul shall be cut off from Israel. No eternal security there. Oh, the typologies of the Passover. I, like I said, I, I got into that uh, a couple of years ago in a video. It's a, it's a, um, you can find it in the playlist onto the Jewish people. Okay, but the typologies are pff, rife there. But right there, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Eternal security was not there in this dispensation. Okay, and incidentally. How did this dispen the dispensation of Abraham, how did that dispensation end? The children of Israel going into Egypt and being brought into bondage. Then the Lord sending the plagues upon Egypt, showing signs and wonders, because the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay, and then he brings them out of Egypt. Okay? To uh, dispense the law. See? Get it? The dispensation of Abraham. That ended with the children of Israel going into Egypt and being uh, under persecution and serving with rigor. And then the Lord sending the signs and wonders and then bringing them out of Egypt. The Passover. Signified with the blood on the doorpost, the Passover lamb. Christ is our Passover. Okay. Let's continue. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat. That only may be done of you. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by, the, by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread, until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul, circle that, get your pen, circle that, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Okay? Now, very quickly, the Jewish people are commanded to keep the Passover. Okay? Today in this dispensation, we are saved by grace through faith to the Jew first, also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Eternally, as pertaining on to our salvation, keeping the Passover is not a requirement because the circumcision made without hands, you know, Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, his blood shed on the cross, see? But, personally, I do believe that if you are a Jew, if you are of the Church of the Living God, yes, I do believe that you ought to keep the Passover. Yes. Is it a requirement for you to stay saved today in this dispensation? Absolutely not. No. No, it is not. But there again, should you? As a Jew? I believe so. Will it make you lose your salvation? No. No, 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 no way. No, 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 But you as a Jew, you're saved and born again in the church of the living God. 
I believe you ought to keep the Passover. Not for anything, but to remember, as you were commanded to. Not for, et not for eternal purposes. Okay? Just wanted to mention that. Let's continue. Verse 20. Ye shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations, shall ye eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door, and will not suffer the destroyer to come in onto your houses to smite you. You could make a comparison about the 144,000 Jews that are sealed in their foreheads in the book of Revelation. You can make a comparison there in a way, just putting that out there for you. Verse 24, And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. As an ordinance. But like I said, today, it is not a requirement for your salvation or for you to stay saved. Uh, by the way, you fellow Gentiles, hi. Uh, we, as Gentiles, uh, we were not commanded to keep the Passover. Okay? I've, I've been to several <laughs> Uh, Seder, Passover dinners, several, many, actually, okay? But um, that doesn't pertain to us. That is for the Jewish people, okay? It's not a requirement for salvation or staying saved today in this dispensation, okay? But again, if you're Jewish, I believe you should keep it. And suffer the consequences for making your own people aware of Jesus Christ, God, our Father, your Messiah, within the Passover. And it shall come to pass, when ye become to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, Oh, did I read more than? Oh, will say unto you, What mean ye this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians, and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away, and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. So you see, the Lord Brought the people of uh, Israel out of Egypt. Called them out through Moses. Okay? Brought them out with signs and wonders. Now, while we're here, let's read verses 40 on to verse 49. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Now, there are some who will go from here, 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 and try to add up these numbers to come up with dates and stuff like that. You have to be cautious. You have to be really cautious with that because I have heard comparison. Uh, I have heard from people about the 430 years how. Israel dwelt in Egypt, remembering that Egypt, in, uh, for our instruction in righteousness, is a type of the world. I have heard people come up with, well, 4,300 years, okay, making it for uh, 7,000 some odd years or something like that, you know, that the earth uh, has been around for 7,000 years, you know, the number seven, that kind of stuff. Because uh, the earth, what, 6,000 years old at the turn of the millennium, uh, may, uh, came something like 7,000? I don't know. I don't know. But I have heard that. I have heard people say 
to equate the 430 years to make it to 4,000 uh, 30 or 4,300 4, years. I have heard that before. That's kind of sketchy. Beware of that. Be very careful of that. If you ever hear someone come to here and try to may, uh, tur twist this by adding this, 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 and also they add the captivity of the Jewish people in Babylon along with this, okay? Uh, you have to be really careful with that. You have to be very careful. Just saying. Let's continue. And it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night to the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, when thou hast circumcised him, different dispensation, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. There was not one bone broken in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger, someone who is not of Israel, shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth with you. Cast not that which is holy before dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Get it? Are, you know how we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, what fellowship hath light with darkness? Okay? We're not supposed to fellowship with lost people. Now, we see the children of Israel being brought out by God. Noah was warned, called of God. It's like, hey, Come on, let's go. Abram, who became Abraham, was called. Get thee out of thy father's house. Let's go. Come on, to a land I will shew thee. Children of Israel, they were brought out by the Lord through signs and wonders. Go to Numbers chapter 14 now. Numbers chapter 14. We are going to be reading verses 20 on to verse 40 in Numbers chapter 14. Now, I've covered this before a little bit more recently, but it bears repeating, okay? The Lord was going to bring them into the promised land, but he tried them to see, okay? So they could see, okay? The generation of those people that he brought out, okay? Okay? He said to him, there's the land of Canaan, go get it, I'm with you, trust me, we'll do it. They didn't trust him. Okay? They didn't trust him. But that generation, that actual generation that came out from Egypt, they didn't trust on the Lord. They, they, they was like, oh, we can't do it, the, the giants are there, and, uh, and who is it? Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Only two. Only two out of that generation. Besides the little ones, which we're going to address. There's a reason why we're looking at this. Numbers chapter 14, verses 20, under verse 40. And the Lord said, I have pardoned 
according to thy word. Moses acted as the intercessor for the people, okay, before this, okay? I've covered this in a more recent video, but bear with me, okay? It, this is the way it goes. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit within him, with him, and hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? which murmur against me. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Careful what you wish for. Careful what you ask for. You might just get it. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun, two out of a massive amount of people. Two. Not even Moses and Aaron. Not even Moses and Aaron. But your little ones, I'm sorry, your, I'm sorry, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him, by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land, died by the plague before the Lord. But... Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. We will stop right there because it, it changes direction from verse 40. Uh, uh, to verse uh, from verse 40 on okay so we will stop at verse 39 you can go ahead and read the whole thing if you want okay but the point is okay out of those who saw all that stuff that the Lord did in bringing them out in the book of Exodus, the giving of the law. This is after the giving of the Levitical law, the book of Levi, okay? After the miracles, after the bread from heaven, okay? The manna and all that they have, uh, the Lord had done for these guys. They murmured. They didn't trust them. And that generation died. They were of those who came out. 
but only two made it to go over to go into the promised land. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. They see all this stuff, yet they didn't trust on the Lord. They didn't trust what the Lord did for them. And if you were to continue in the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 15 and stuff, we'll, we'll, we'll get to chapter 15, but also in chapter 16. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 on to verse 32. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock. Now this is during the current dispensation for us. Okay? Over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Oh boy. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. The rebellion of Korah. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Sanctified. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Very familiar verses. They ought to be. They ought to be to you. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses three hundred verse twelve. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Falling away. Saved people can get messed up. But see, we're sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? You, you're saved and born again. You get messed up in uh, error, even heresy. The, the Lord's in you. He's he going to be screaming at you. If you don't listen, you know, and don't change and repent of that, he could very well kill you. Okay? Save people can get messed up. But see, who the Lord loveth, he rebukes and chastens. And if you ain't with uh, chastisement, then you're a bastard. That's from the book of Hebrews. Go find it. Okay? You're claiming uh, you're of the church of the living God? Oh, I'm just messed up. Where's the chastisement? Is it there? If it isn't, guess what? You're lost! Let's continue. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, the rebuilt third temple. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And know ye now, and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let in until he be taken out of the way. Catching away. Covered this many times. And then shall that wicked be revealed. After we are caught up, then shall that wicked be revealed. Okay? Who the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Signs and lying wonders? The Jews require a sign. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, 
because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Pleasure in unrighteousness. Where, where are we going next? Where are we going next? Huh? Come on, you two. Where are we going next? First John. Chapter 2. Verses 15 on to verse 29. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And even now are there many Antichrists. Oh yeah, well, hello. Whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Oh, beg your pardon. I'll put that in perspective a little bit for our instruction and in righteousness of what we looked at in Numbers. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Have I not written unto you, because ye know not? I have not written unto you, beg your pardon, because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. <laughs> Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning, that if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you, concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing, which ye have received of him abideth in you. And that is talking about the seal of the Holy Ghost within you. It's not talking about that crazy Catholic garbage. No, it's talking about the Holy Ghost, you know, and the Lord is that spirit. God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. Let's continue, okay? And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. <laughs> Verse 27 explains itself, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. They went out from us, but they went out of us. Yeah, yeah, we're hitting this again. Of course. Do you not, Church of the Living God, I'm not talking to you right now. You, do you not see what craziness is going on out there? People calling themselves Christians. And look at them. Falling like ducks 
in a pond. <laughs> Falling one by one by one by one. Go back to numbers. Go back to numbers. Numbers now, chapter 15. Numbers now, chapter 15, verses 34 on to verse 41. Oh, excuse me. Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 on to verse 41. Okay? And then in, you know, after all this, where the children of Israel in here in chapter um, in chapter 14, where they decide to go anyway and they get their butts whooped and they cause all this stink, they keep fighting against the Lord. This generation that died in the wilderness of only two survived. But right here, right here, verses 37 on to verse 41 in Numbers chapter 15. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. That ye may remember and do all my commandments, and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. And when you are saved, sealed unto the day of redemption, you have the Holy Ghost, who will guide you into all truth. And see, someone who is truly saved and born again, who tries to quench the Spirit, good luck with that. Especially if a saved man gets involved in error or heresy. What kind of wreck would that go? What kind of wreck that gonna be? Huh? If you're saved and messed up with something, you need to repent of it. Because the worst case scenario is the Lord drop you dead. Oh, well, I'm eternally secure. Yeah, but like I've said to you before, what? Do you want to get up there and have the Lord be like, yeah, just go. Just don't. Just go. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, go to Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 31. One second, brethren. All right, this chair is very uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 14, on to verse 30. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, the days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud, and the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them 
and will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? Oh, you think you, you, you Christians. Yeah, you know, you, you, you know, calling yourselves Christians. Oh, things are going really good for you right now, even during all this craziness, right? In your little, um, in your little satanic church buildings, or in <laughs> the temperature thing, social distancing. You're a bunch of hypocrites. Let's continue. And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and wax and fat. Then will they turn unto other gods and serve them, and provoke me and break my covenant. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination which they go about. For I know their imagination which they go about. Even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song. Wrote this song the same day, and taught it to the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge, and said, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law, and put it in the sides of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion, and thy stiff neck, which Stephen uh, addresses. <laughs> Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death? Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves, and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days. Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of the song until they were ended. Boy, uh, um, verse 29 kind of sounds a little reminiscent to what we read in Acts, doesn't it? Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And these were those, that generation, the little ones, the young ones. That's that generation that uh, Moses is talking about. Okay? But now, go back to Numbers chapter 33. Numbers chapter 33. Verses 54 on to verse 56. Or, excuse me. Verses 52 on to verse 56. Okay? Go there. Actually, let's read verses 50 under verse 56. Pick your part. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places, and ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land, and dwell therein. 
For I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth. According to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which yet... Uh, that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that, that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. Judges, are you, are you getting the instruction in righteousness here? Are you getting it? Judges, chapter 2. Judges, chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 4. Judges, chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 4. Come on, fingers, work with me. Judges, chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 4. Now, you read in Judges, chapter 1, Verses 1, or verses 27, on to the end of the chapter, in Judges chapter 1, they didn't do like they were supposed to do. They left some of them there. Okay? Judges 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. And the angel of the Lord, I wonder who that was, hmm. came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you onto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will break my covenant. I will never break my covenant with you. Okay? Now, get your pen. One, two, three, four. Four eyes in that verse alone. Four of them. Get, get, your, get your little pen, circle the eyes in that verse, okay? Do it. Do it. Or, or at least mark them down. I know some of you don't want to mark in your Bibles. Praise the Lord. In your scriptures. Beg your pardon. Okay? Four. And the angel of the Lord, who was this angel of the Lord, came from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you onto the land which I swear unto your fathers and I said I will never break my covenant with you. Let's continue. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore, I, wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. Who is the angel of the Lord? A pre-carnate Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. It's kind of obvious, isn't it? But we see what happens. For those who are called out, they get messed up with these things, right? Look what happens. Look what happens to those who are of the church of the living God. Who decide to compromise. And don't put their trust in the Lord. And fear what they're going to do to you rather than what the Lord's going to do to you if you mess around.
uh, the changed life that the Lord will produce in you once you are saved and born again, sealed unto the day of redemption? How can it not happen? Because Jesus Christ, God the Father, lives within you. See, these twits who speak against the changed life that comes after salvation, you know, you know why they're so against it? They, well, you don't have to. They cling to, well, we're going to heaven. Eh, eh. You know why though, these twits do that? Newsflash, they ain't saved. They ain't saved. You watch that one video by Brother Aaron Judge. Aaron Deering Judge. <laughs> but now, go to Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. My most favoritest book in all of the scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 1 on to verse 16. Hear ye the word, hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. And these hirelings that go to these church buildings and these, these Christians who love their church and you know, don't want to judge, don't have a perfect standard, they went out from us, but they were not of us. A saved man, a saved woman can get really messed up. But see, if you're saved, you got the Holy Ghost in you, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who is going to be screaming at you about your error and heresy and will correct you. But you put up a stink with him, because remember, he's not pointing a gun at your head. Uh, he he going to wreck your life. And probably even take it. But then again, there are those who are claiming to be, but are not, seem to be falling away. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Let's continue. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. <laughs> for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to thee doth it appertain, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms there is none like unto thee. But they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarshish, and gold from Euphaz. The work of the workmen and of the hands of the founder, blue and purple is their clothing. They are all the work of cunning men. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God. Note the singular references. And an everlasting king and his wrath, at his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. 
Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods, LG, that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom, Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity and the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you Jesuit, pond scum, vile murderers. You're going to get what's coming to you. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. The rod of his inheritance. The apple of his eye. The Jews. Learn not the way of the heathen. See, the, the, the separation is going on right now. Profoundly. Again, a saved man, a saved woman, can get really screwed up, beg your pardon, in heresy even, and very big error. But if you are saved, truly saved, of the church of the living God, the Lord dwells within you, uh, he going to correct you, not by force, but things are going to go haywire one way or another. Is there chastening there? Is there chastening there? For who the Lord loveth, he correcteth and chasteneth. But if you be without chastisement, you're bastards. You are not of the church of the living God. Those who said they were of us, but yet they're not of us, falling away. And my goodness gracious, if you're of the church of the living God and you are compromising, the Lord rebuke you and you, you need to repent. And um, get, gather up your um, gather up your fortitude and stand. Stand on the side of the Lord. Because as we have seen already in the examples of being called out, Okay, to be separate. Okay, we're not to learn the way of the heathen. And in the Exodus, you know, where Stephen refers to them as the church in the wilderness, okay, called out assembly, how did that begin? Signs and wonders, blood. Killed, all, uh, killed a lot of the Egyptians, not all of them. But the blood, the Passover, it started with blood. It was sanctified in blood, wasn't it? Let's continue. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19, verses 9 on to verse 18. This is after 
uh, Elijah versus the prophets of Baal. Okay, you go ahead and read that on your own time. And then Ahab, or excuse me, Elijah uh, gets a little freaked out, you could say, by the alpha female, the vile, wicked, disgusting Jezebel, and he runs. Okay, runs away, goes into the wilderness. That's the backstory here in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 on to verse 18. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. There were, well, shh, I won't spoil it. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. There shall be earthquakes and famines. Earthquakes in diverse places, excuse me. Pestilence. But the end is not yet. I'm not saying. Let's continue. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out, and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, note how he responds here initially. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel, the king over, Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So we kind of see that Elijah wasn't the only one, but it was a very small remnant. For those of us who are alive and remain, now, why is all this come? Why did all this come upon the children of Israel? We, we kind of covered that, but I want to want us to go to 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11 verses 9 on to verse 13. Okay, talking about this remnant. Now, we all know that, um, well, let's, let's cover that first, okay? Let's cover that first. Uh, chapter 11, 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 4. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Moab, Moab and the Ammonites, Lot's descendants, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. 
of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after other gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives. And he had, excuse me, 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as was the heart of David his father. Now, you can reference on your own time, okay, go, go ahead, get, get your pen, okay, write these down, okay, about, about this, what we just read, 1 Kings chapter uh, 11, verses 1 through 4. Write these down. Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 16. Write, write it down. Write it down. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 under verse 20. Okay? Okay? You with me? All right? That, that's important. Okay? But now, let's read verses 9 under verse 13. Okay? Check those out in Deuteronomy. Seriously. Write them down. Okay? You do got to do this yourself. Okay? <laughs> let's go. Verses 9 on to verse 13. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee. I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake. But I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen small remnant. Okay? Now, 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 25 on to verse 33. 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 25 on to verse 33. We got to look at this. Uh, beg your pardon, brethren. One second, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry about that, brethren. I wrote down the wrong reference there. It's 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 25 on to verse 33. 12. 12. Okay. 25 on to verse 33. Now, what happened in that split there? Jeroboam, who went and, let's read. Then Jeroboam built Shechem and Mount Ephraim. And you read the book of Hosea, and you kind of get the, you can kind of figure out why both Dan, which is in the book of Judges, and Ephraim are not listed in the ones that are sealed in the book of Revelation. And dwelt therein, and went out from thence, and built Peniel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, that was the son of Solomon, obviously. And they shall kill me, and go again to Rehoboam, and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold, thy gods, little g, plural, gods, thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, 
And the other put he in. You looking at that? Dan. And this thing became a sin for the people. Went to worship before one, the one even unto Dan. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people which were not of the sons of Levi. Only the Levitical priests under the law were um, supposed to be the priests. But he made whosoever they, he wanted or, or whoever wanted to be a priest, made him a priest. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And the place, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had uh, devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. And he offered upon the altar the and burnt incense. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. Isaiah. Isaiah. You know where we're going. You have to. Have to. Have to. You caught those eyes. Or that he had made. Excuse me. That he had made. Okay? You caught that, right? Not your head. Yes, you caught that. I hope so. I enunciated it like that for purpose. Okay? Isaiah 14, verses 12, on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And you go back here. You go back here. Let's pick up in uh, 1 Kings chapter 12. Okay. We will pick up. From 32 and verse 33. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel, the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. And he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. But you know what we got to keep in mind? Look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 29 on to verse 39. Go there. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. 29 on the verse 39. Check this out. Check this out. God actually did ordain Jeroboam, the son of the, yeah, He did. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. He did. He ordained him. Check this out. Verses 29 on the verse 39. And it came to pass in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11. And it came to pass at that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Asia, the Shilonite, found him in the way. And he had clad himself with a new garment, and they, and they two were alone in the field. And Asia caught the new garment that was on him, and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, 
the God of Israel. Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and I and will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways, to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Howbeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life, all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose, because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes, and unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light alway before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. And I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all, thy so all that thy soul desireth, and shalt be king over Israel. And it shall be if conditional clause. Circle it. If thou wilt hearken. Circle that too. Unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways, and do that and do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did. Then I will be with thee and build thee a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. But not forever. And when we look in 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 25 on to 33, what did Jeroboam the son of Nebat do? Made the people to sin. And there was a remnant left unto David out of all Israel. Are you getting the point? Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah chapter 25. Verses 1 under verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 1 under verse 14. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me. And I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. And the Lord has sent unto you all his servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. Yeah, God hasn't sent you. The scripture doesn't say that. That's your interpretation. God wants us to have a church building. God would want us to take that vaccine. They said, Turn ye again now, every one from his evil way, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and provoke me not to anger with the work of your hands and I will do you no hurt. 
Hello, America. <laughs> Hello, America. Jesuit America. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord. We've been hearing a lot of that in this video thus far, haven't we? That ye might provoke me to anger with the work works of your own hands to your own hurt. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words. Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them again against this land, and against the inhabitants thereof, and against all these nations round about, and will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment and a hissing, and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness, and the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones, and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and, and, will, make it a perpet and will make it perpetual desolation. Desolations, excuse me. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. And of course, you read Nehemiah, Ezra, Okay, about the restoration and stuff like that. Okay? See, God, throughout Scripture, calls. Called Noah. Noah was told to do something. He did it. Prepared for what was coming. Called him into the ark. It was, you know, the water uh, lifted him up. Everybody died. Okay? The whole earth was changed because of that. The whole climate and atmosphere, I believe anyway. Abram, who became Abraham, was renamed Abraham. Excuse me. It's like, hey, come on, let's go. Okay? He was called out. Moses and the children of Israel was brought out by signs and wonders. price of blood they were spared by the lamb sprinkled on the doorpost and our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father is the door right hence the church in the wilderness Acts chapter 7 uh, where um, where um, Stephen talks about that and that remnant that remnant out of all that that was brought out, they suffered persecution, trial, tribulation amongst all those who were of their own people, the Jew, the Israelites. But yet only a small remnant made it. You get the point? Price of a call, beloved brethren, suffering, and the price of being called out to church for us today came at the price of blood, which we will be addressing in the very next video. But for now, Thank you so much for watching. If you do, I love you. May the Lord Jesus Christ be magnified, glorified. And I think you got the point. See you in the very next video.